Hello viewers, welcome to this video. This time we're going to be setting up a Kubernetes cluster using a tool called RKE. So RKE is Rancher's Kubernetes certified Kubernetes distribution and the tool that we use to build the RKE Kubernetes cluster is also called RKE. So RKE is just a binary that we're going to download and I've got my GitHub repository. Let me open up. So in my GitHub repository in Kubernetes GitHub repository, I've got this Rancher directory and inside that I've got the RKE and I've got all the instructions here. So RKE supports any Linux distribution. So you can set up an RKE Kubernetes cluster on any Linux distribution. For this demo purpose, I'm going to be using Ubuntu 2004 and I've got a Vagrant file. So if I open up the Vagrant file, so all I'm doing in this Vagrant file is bringing up three virtual machines, each with two gig of RAM and two CPU. So they will be named node one, node two, and node three. And they will get the IP address 172.16.16.101, 102, and 103. So if you want to uh, give it a try, you can uh, use this Vagrant file. It doesn't have to be a virtual machine. So you can basically use your physical servers if you've got or you can use any other virtual machines, even you can use LXT containers and so on. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Vagrant with VirtualBox virtual machines. And I've got a bootstrap shell script. It's a very simple bootstrap script. So all I'm doing here is just setting up a password for the root user account. And then I'm enabling root SSH login and password authentication. So that's my bootstrap script and I've got the Vagrant file. What I'll be doing is once I bring up the Vagrant environment with, with all these three virtual machines, I will be doing some prerequisite setup. So the first thing I'll be doing is I'll be generating an SSH key from my host machine and then copy those keys to these individual machines, to these three virtual machines, so that I can log in to these nodes without having to type in the root account's password. RKE needs an SSH key to be able to log into these nodes to set up the Kubernetes components and so on. So the first step is to generate the SSH key and copy it to these three machines. And then some prerequisite steps that we need to be doing on all these nodes. So it's not a big thing, it's just like these four steps, disabling firewall. Uh, in all my pre videos, I just disable firewall just to make things a little easier. But if you want to keep firewall enabled, which you want to if you're running it in a production, you might want to open up certain ports for Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's well documented in kubernetes.io website. So if you go there, you can find what ports you need to open in order to run Kubernetes components and so on. All right. So for, to make life a little easier, I'm disabling firewall and uh, disabling swap and uh, turning it off permanently in ATCFS tab so that it doesn't get mounted the next time you restart your machine and then setting up a couple of kernel parameters and then installing docker engine so in order to set up an RKE cluster all you need is a Linux distribution I mean a set of machines with Linux installed and docker engine installed that's it the rest of the things will be taken care of by RKE so the first command is RKE config and it's going to ask you a series of questions like how many hosts you have and what type of role you want to assign to each host, what their IP addresses are and so on. It's going to be an interactive command. It will ask you a series of questions and once that's complete, you will end up with a file called cluster.yaml and then finally you just do RKE up which will set up your cluster. And then we will see how to use uh, the cube configuration file generated by RKE up command and then interact with our Kubernetes cluster. All right, so enough talking and I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository and in my Kubernetes repository, I'm gonna go into Rancher and RKE and I've got my Vagrant file here. So I'm gonna do Vagrant up and it will take about a minute or two to provision those three virtual machines. I'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, so all of our virtual machines are up. Now I'm gonna generate SSH keeper, I'm still on my host machine so I'm going to run SSH keygen minus T type is RSA and the number of bytes is 2048 and I'm going to specify uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave uh, the file as the default one ID underscore RSA for the private key and I'm not going to set any passphrase and uh, you can see here that's my private key that got generated and that's the public key or if you want you can also use a custom name you can give it a, a name for this key pair but if you give it a different name then you also need to ensure that you give the same name when you're configuring your cluster which we will come to in a minute okay so that's done so now we need to copy this key to our virtual machine so first let me copy that to 101 so there's a tool called ssh copy id so first time it's going to ask you for the root accounts password 
And if you're using my Vagrant environment to bring up these virtual machines, as I shown you in my bootstrap script, the password for the root account is kubeadmin. So it's asking for the password, kubeadmin. And the first time it asks for the password, next time you can just log in without having to type in your password. Okay, let's let me do that for the other two machines as well. Cube admin. And finally for the third machine, cube admin. Okay, so we've copied our SSH key. So now I can log into any of these machines without having to type in the password. So if I do that, I'm logged in. And I can do that for all the machines and it let me log in without typing the password so that's fine okay so let me go to the documentation now we're gonna do all these steps on all the three machines so i'm going to bring up three panes and i'm going to log into each of the machines here so the first machine and the second machine 102 and the third one 103 okay and i'm also going to synchronize my paint so if i start typing on one of them it's going to replicate my commands on all the three panes okay so the first thing is to disable the firewall okay and disable swap right and now set the kernel parameters clear the screen and finally we're gonna install the docker engine Okay, so this is going to take a minute or two. I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, Docker is installed. So this is Ubuntu. So when you install Docker, it's also going to enable and start the Docker service. But if you're running any other Linux distribution, make sure to enable and start the Docker service. Systemctl status Docker. Okay, so Docker is running fine. All right, so that's all we need uh, on all these machines. So I'm going to exit out of everything. Clear the screen. All right, so we are done with all the prerequisites and now we are good to uh, download the RKE binary and uh, bring up the cluster. So if I scroll above, I've got a link to download RKE or if you want, you can just go to GitHub Rancher's RKE page, which is here, Rancher RKE. So the link that I've given in my GitHub documentation takes you directly to the releases page and I'm going to download the latest release. These are all pre-releases. So if I go to the next page. Okay, so there's this latest release version 1.1.7 and I'm going to download RKE underscore Linux AMD64. Copy the link address. Wget. Okay, so that's getting downloaded. Okay, so now I'm going to set the executable permission to RKE and I'm going to move this to user local bin as RKE. So now I'm from, if I do which RKE, RKE is under user local bin and I can do RKE minus minus version. This is the version that we downloaded 1.1.7. Okay, cool. Right, RKE minus minus help. So we've got all these help. Our RKE config set up cluster configuration so that's the first command we're going to be running and then we will use RKE up to bring up the cluster and finally we can use RKE remove to tear down the cluster let's see all these commands one by one so first is RKE RKE expects a cluster configuration file to tell you to tell RKE which nodes are available and which nodes will take which role and so on what version of Kubernetes you want to run and what sort of uh, cluster overlay network you want to install and all those details so it needs a cluster configuration file either you can create the cluster configuration file by hand if you know how to create it or you can um, you can start uh, working on the cluster configuration file by looking at some examples in the ranchers website but the easiest thing is by just running rke config so if you run rke config it's going to build up your cluster configuration file and the file name is cluster.yaml. But if you want to give it a different name, just say RKE config minus minus name, my cluster.yaml or something. But if you specify a different name, you also need to specify that when you are using the RKE up command. By default, if you don't specify anything, it will expect uh, a file named cluster.yaml, YML. Okay, so let's do RKE config. I'm not going to give any options so that by default it's going to create cluster.yaml file. Okay, the first question it asks is cluster level SSH private key path. So this is the SSH private key that we generated on our host machine using SSH keygen utility. So I didn't give it any specific name, so I gave the default name. So this is fine for me, but this is the place where you need to specify the, the private key path, the complete path. Um, so if you've given it a different name, make sure to give the same name here. But in my case, I'm just going to hit enter because I use the default name. 
number of hosts. So I've got three virtual machines that I want to set up as a Kubernetes cluster. So three SSH address of host one, which is 172.16.16.101. SSH port is 22, private key path, I'm not going to specify anything because by default it's going to use the cluster level SSH private key and again the same SSH private key of host and it says you haven't entered anything so it's going to use the cluster level default SSH key which is what I want. SSH user of the host, okay, so RKE needs to log in as a specific user and that user will have SSH passwordless authentication. So we set up that for the root account. So we need to be specifying the uh, root as the user account. Is host 127.16.16.101 is a control plane? Is it a master host? Yes. Is it a worker host? I'm gonna specify why for that as well. Is it an HCD host? Yes. So basically I'm going to set up all the three machines as master, worker, as well as HCD. So Okay, override host name of the host. Yes, I definitely want to override the host name. If you don't do that, when you do kubectl get nodes, all you will see is the IP address but not the host name. So I'm gonna say it's node one internal IP of the host. So I'm gonna specify 172.16.16.101. So this is the IP address or the network interface it uses for internal cluster level communication. So if you've got multiple network interfaces, you may need to specify uh, the IP address that you want to use for the uh, cluster traffic. So because this is the virtual box that I'm using, it has got two network interfaces. So I need to make sure that it always uses this IP address for the uh, for the for the Kubernetes traffic. So I'm specifying the internal IP address. Okay, Docker socket pod. I'm going to leave that as default. Okay, so that's all uh, needed for a uh, host. So now we're going to go through the same exercise for the, all the other hosts. So we've got two more hosts to complete. SSH address of host 2 is 172.16.16.102. Port is 22. Private key is default. Default user is root. Yes. Yes. etcd. Yes. Override host name. Yes. It's going to be node 2. Internal IP address is 172.16.16.102. .102. That's the default one. SSH address of host 3, our final host, 172.16.16.103.22, empty, empty, and the root user account. Control plane, yes. Worker node, yes. etcd, yes. Hostname override, this is node 3. Internal IP address is 172.16.16.103. Default network plugin type. Okay, so we've done with the configuration of all the three machines. And now it's asking us to choose what overlay network we want to use for this Kubernetes cluster. So by default, it chooses Kennel. But I'm uh, gonna go with uh, Calico. Feel free to choose any overlay network you want, but I'm gonna choose Calico. Authentication strategy, X509 certificate base, that's fine. Authentication mode is RBAC, Kubernetes Docker image. So this is why you specify what version of Kubernetes you want. So I'm gonna go with the default 1.18.8. .8. Cluster domain, cluster.local, cluster IP range. Enable port security, if you want you can enable port security, but I'm just gonna leave that. Uh, disabled cluster network sitter DNS service IP add add-on manifest no okay so we are done with it so now if I take a look at what's inside this directory you can see here cluster.yaml so that's the new file it got generated and if I take a look at cluster.yaml you can see here all the information that we just entered okay Alright, so in the future, if you want to update this cluster by adding additional master node or HCD node or worker node, this is the file that you will be editing. Alright, so make sure you preserve this cluster.yaml. Any operation you do through the RKE tool, you need to specify this cluster.yaml file. Okay, so make sure to preserve that file and we are good to bring up our cluster. So the next command is RKE up. That's it. If you've given it a different name, you also need to specify minus minus config my cluster.yaml if you have created the cluster with a different name the cluster configuration file with different name but since we use the default name cluster.yaml you don't have to specify anything so if you do rke up it's going to log into each of the node as root account with uh, the ssh key that we provided 
and it's going to take a little while to set up the cluster install the add-on and everything so I'm gonna pause the video here and come back when it's ready it's gonna take like 15 to 20 minutes all right the command completed and it has set up our Kubernetes cluster and if I clear the screen and now if I take a look at uh, the files in the current directory you will see two new files so one is cluster.rke state and the other one is kubeconfig cluster.yaml so this is your Kubernetes configuration file and that is your cluster state file so this is also very important so once you run the RKE config and RKE up, you're gonna make sure that you uh, preserve these three files which are very important. The cluster state file which contains the state of your uh, cluster, what it has deployed and so on. And the cluster.yaml is your cluster configuration file. Any further operations that you do on your cluster with RKE up command like adding a new master node, etcd or worker node or upgrading your cluster, you will need this cluster configuration file. And that's your cube configuration file that you need to copy into your uh, home directory under .cube directory, which we will do now. Uh, I'm going to make a directory called .cube under my home directory, and I'm going to copy cube config cluster.yaml. Okay, so that's done. And if I take a look at that cube configuration file that it has generated, that's the uh, the cube configuration file. So there's one small thing that you need to notice. So if you take a look at the server. So it's the IP address of our third node, node 3, 172.16.16.103 and the port is 6443. When you're using kubectl, you're always talking to the third master node, right? The last node, it, RKE by default, it always updates the IP address of the, the last master node that it has provisioned, okay? In our case, we had three machines, three master nodes and the last node that RKE provisioned was 103. So that's the the case here and if that particular master node goes down your kubectl command will fail so you need to at the moment as of recording this video today uh, we don't have rke doesn't provide any operation for this so you will have to take care of this yourself so if uh, master 3 goes down if node 3 goes down you need to change this ip address to one of the other master nodes 101 or 102 to be able to interact with the kubernetes cluster or you can set up your own load balancer uh, using hache proxy and so on but this is just a little thing to bear in mind if node 3 goes down and if you don't change this, your kubectl command will error out. Okay, so we've got our kube configuration file copied. So now I can do kubectl just to verify that our cluster is healthy. kubectl cluster info, kubectl get nodes. So we have node 1, node 2, node 3, all of them are healthy and in the ready status. And they are all control plane, etcd and worker. And we are running version 1.18.8. Okay, back in the documentation, we've done all the steps, we've verified the commands to check the status of the cluster. Now we've got our cluster running, so we can use the RKE command to clear this cluster completely. So if I do RKE minus minus help, there is this remove command that we can use to remove the uh, cluster. So I can do RKE remove. And it's going to use, it's going to expect cluster.yaml file, the configuration file that we created. If you have given it a different name, you also need to specify minus minus config, I think. Let's take a look. RKE help, yeah, it's minus minus config if you want, uh, if you had given it a different name, but we had not given it a different name. We use the cluster.yaml, the default file name. So all we need is RKE remove. It's going to ask you for confirmation. If you don't want, if you don't want it to ask for confirmation, you can use the minus minus force option here. I'm going to type Y and hit enter. So now it's going to remove all the components that it has deployed in your virtual machines. All right, but you need to bear in mind that it doesn't completely remove everything that it has done. So there are things that you need to do manually. Say, for example, uh, let me log into one of the machines here. Um, okay, so node 3, I'm logging into node 3 and if I take a look at docker ps command output So you can see here the docker containers are still running. It hasn't been cleared and uh, We installed docker so we can't expect RKE to uninstall docker But I would have expected it to clean up uh, at least this docker containers and I can do docker images and you can see here It hasn't cleared the docker images as well. So there are these little things that you need to clear clear it yourself before uh, using Rancher again on these nodes, okay? All right, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you've got time, play with it, Add, uh, try adding additional nodes. 
Um, I'll try and make a video on how to upgrade your cluster or adding additional master nodes or HCD or worker nodes but I've got other videos to cover coming up uh, in the next few weeks so I'm gonna leave that with you to try if you've got any problems let me know I'll be happy to help uh, meanwhile share this video with your friends if you like it and make sure to subscribe to my channel and I think that's it I will see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye